Are you a creator with a small channel looking to grow your subscribers and use this platform to make some extra income ASAP? Well, today on the VI show, we've got Cody Warner, vlogger and video production entrepreneur, who's going to share how he jump started his channel to make it a full time gig, how he creates income in both good and bad times, and is going to share some bonus tips on how to collab with bigger YouTubers you might not have heard of. So if you're a small channel and need to crush it now, all that and more on the VI show coming up. This video is brought to you by vidIQ, the number one Chrome extension for YouTubers looking for on-point data analysis, research resources, and enhanced video creator tools. Start getting more views in less time today by signing up for free at vidIQ.com slash influence. That's vidIQ.com slash influence. What's up, influencers? Welcome to Video Influencers, where we're helping build your influence income and impact with online video. I'm excited to talk to you, Cody. Thank you so much for being here on the VI show. My pleasure. My absolute yeah. pleasure. Yeah, and you guys, we're going to get into so much today, and it's some crazy times going on in the world. So we're here to help you. We're going to be doing a Q&A at the very end. But the first thing I want to do is just uh, pick your brain, Cody, about what is going on and why it is a sad time and our prayers are with people who are suffering. However, there's a huge opportunity and there's ways to adjust and, you know, uh, change up your strategy to actually uh, uh, actually grow your channel and grow your opportunities for your life. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I'm excited to talk about it. Absolutely. So you guys, if you're uh, excited about the topic, hit that like button, put your questions down below, and we're going to answer those a little bit later. The first thing I want to do is dive into Cody's beginnings, his story. But the first thing I want to do is show you that he didn't always have this epic vlog type of content. Uh, you don't know this, Cody, but we're going to show the first video <laughs> that ever was uploaded to your channel. So let's go ahead and play that right now. I'm so excited right now. Awesome. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this is my favorite part right here. Yeah. This is real too. That's actually me jumping off that two story. What? Yeah. <laughs> All right. There you go. So I have a few questions, but the reason we show that is because if you're familiar with Cody, he's got some epic content, a uh, really great editor. Uh, obviously you record as well, but uh, that was, I don't even know if that was 420p. It definitely wasn't HD, it wasn't even <laughs> widescreen. Tell us about that yeah. video. You were the one doing the parkour in it, so I'm excited about that, but tell us why you got started and how that even came about, like that video. Yeah, it's. I'm so happy that that's my first video that is on my channel. I'm so proud of that video, even to this day. Um, I did. I was the guy in the black shirt, and I did perform all my own stunts, which is which is very exciting <laughs> to be able to brag about now. So that was, um, that was something like four, twelve, maybe twelve years ago, something like that. Um, thirteen years ago, and there was a competition that this candy bar company take five put out and they're like you know make us a commercial you get a chance to win a bunch of candy bars or something like that and i was like yeah that sounds fantastic i asked my then girlfriend um amber who's now my wife we have two baby girls now and and uh so it's, it's always so fun to look back and i love youtube for that but asked amber if she would be a part of it and did this little chase scene where somebody steals a candy bar from me and uh and i chase them down and so got a uh, two friends to help me when we we're running down the hall in that shot um that's one of my friends pulling another one of my friends on my skateboard backward just using a little San uh, sony handycam so yeah just a, a little competition i edited it in like um sony movie maker something you know, like very basic editing tools i actually made that song um wow. in some sort of midi producer because i didn't want to 
use a radio song because I knew that take five would be like, they would flag it for copyright. I, I at least had that sort of um, intuition at the time. So yeah, that I just, I wanted to submit it and I wanted to do something fun with my friends. And that was over a decade ago. And one of the things I love about your story is that wasn't just uh, the only video you did in 10 years. You actually uploaded a ton of content. And in fact, I think a lot of people can relate to this. You didn't grow that much. In fact, I did the research in the first 10 years years, you might have grown like 2000 subscribers, yet you had this crazy jump, uh, you know, and maybe like your 11th or 12th year, whatever it is, um, where yeah. it spiked. And so this is a big part of your story. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons why. But tell us how you went from that video doing parkour, which by the way, I'm very impressed with um, it with <laughs> not not HD quality still to be fair it was a dope video, like the angles and everything and it was put together well. But how did you, you go from that? to the epic vlogs that you put out now and to doing full-time YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so just really quick on the stats before I dive into that. Uh, I, I acquired 111 subscribers in my first 10 years of having that wow. channel. So when I started daily vlogging in 2018, I had 111 subscribers. They were all completely gone. Like, I don't think that any of them are even on the platform anymore. So when I started in 2018 um, and I started, I made the commitment to start a daily vlog where I was going to put up a video every day, there was really nobody watching my channel unless I was bringing them there. I didn't have any, any holdovers, right? So 2018 started the channel with 111 subscribers and my goal was I want to document what it's like to be building this video production company. I had a video production company. We had been in business for um, just under four years at the time and we had hired some employees recently. Like we, It felt like we were really starting to scale this thing and, and I felt I had this feeling in my gut, in my heart that something exciting was going to happen. And uh, and started documenting it and um, just kept going every single day, trying to put out a new video, trying to encourage people who are in a similar situation because it's hard to be an entrepreneur. And um, along the way, I started noticing other YouTubers that I really looked up to and admired. And, uh, and, and one of those was Peter McKinnon. I made some videos about him. Another one that we all look up to in the vlogging space is Casey Neistat made yeah. um, some videos talking about him and also one in New York City, which is where I really found my first kind of jump in 2000 subscribers, um, where I was outside of 368. I was there for a different business thing. I was actually wearing a suit and tie that day, which I never wear anymore, <laughs> but I was that day. And uh and made a video. I yelled across the street to Casey and asked him if he had a second as he was walking from his one office space to his other office space. Hey, Casey, do you have a second? And um, there were a couple other of his fans standing there across the street. And he yelled back, no. <laughs> and uh, and so I made a video about that because I was daily vlogging and um, and a lot and that got kind of caught up in the algorithm. And a lot of people saw yeah. that video. I think I remember seeing that now that you think about it back in the day when you uploaded it. Um, and, and back then I wasn't a subscriber viewers. Of course I am now, but I do remember that now um, a, a little bit. But the reason I love yeah. your journey is because, I mean, that can be a struggle, especially if you want to be full time. Uh, but one of the things I love about your story is you've been able to create income in different ways, right? You had a business, mm -hmm. uh, you did some freelancing. Tell us about uh, some of the strategies you utilize before we get into some of those uh, crazy collabs that you were into that help you grow um, to help you get yeah. by to go from part time to full time so that you could provide uh, for your family, pay the bills and uh, get from, you know, doing this as a hobby to doing this full time. Mm hmm. Yeah, I so for me, it was a mentality thing from the beginning. I did not think of YouTube as a way to make money like the, the idea of making money from my YouTube channel, really, it was no way it wasn't even on the peripheral when I started uh, the vlog. So for me, I was using my video, my skills in video making my skills in sales and maybe a little bit of web design to make money. And I thought of myself as as an entrepreneur, as a business owner who was, you know, making commercial videos for people. 
um, I thought of that as the way that I made money and, and the YouTube thing for me was, was really just that, that documentation. So I was, you know, having, not having YouTube to rely on it in, in any way, I was constantly trying to sharpen and hone my skills as a salesperson, as a cinematographer, as an editor. Um, and as a storyteller, really as a as a communicator. Um, and that's what I was using YouTube to do so that I could utilize those skills and get paid by other local companies in my area to make commercial videos for them. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can relate to that, that have gone from part-time to full-time, you know, Sean Cannell, co-founder of this channel. He also started out off as a videographer doing freelance work and that's how he, he kind of bridged the gap. Right. Same thing with me, even though I'm not really a photographer or videographer, I've been able to utilize my skills in editing and recording to, you know, create businesses or to, uh, get side gigs. And I think that's something that's overlooked. And right now, at the time of broadcasting this, it is a crazy time in the world. And I don't think there's anybody that hasn't been affected in one way or the other, whether it's uh, some family and friends that are struggling through this, um, health, um, being isolated, quarantined, um, and especially in business. You know, I, this is what mm -hmm. I do full time. And I know this is what you do full time, but we've both been affected, right? Um, yep. and, and you can speak to how you've been affected, but my brand brand deals have almost come to a complete halt, which is about 70% yeah. of my income. That's a majority of our income and just completely has stopped. So of course I'm scrambling, mm -hmm. but what's interesting, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this, is our skills, not only uh, you know recording and editing, but just content creation in general is so valuable. The fact that we're live right now is something that most people don't know how to do. They don't know what platforms to use. They don't have the equipment. They don't know what software. They don't know how to connect their microphone to their computer. So if yeah. you're watching this, the first thing I want to mention, if you're struggling or you've lost a job or been laid off or maybe you, you don't have as many hours or you need to make up some lost income, just know that what you already do every single day or maybe you're a weekend warrior and creating content on Saturday and Sunday, that is going to become even more valuable during this crisis. And if you just put on your creative cap and step outside of the box, you can utilize these skills to actually create some side income right now to help you get through mm -hmm. this really difficult time. Um, Cody, I know that this is what you're doing. Can you speak to this and some of the strategies that you're utilizing to help you get through this crisis? Yeah. So I think um, just a, just a quick case in point is one of my friends, Scott McKenna, he's also from, from Pennsylvania. Um, he recent, I think a week ago, put up a video that was how to use a Canon camera as a webcam. And, you know, I saw him drop it and it got, you know, got a couple hundred views, uh, and maybe in the, in the first couple of days, I was like, Oh, that's cool. I went back to check that video because that's what I'm live streaming on right now. And it has 35,000 views, you know, in just a, in just a period of a couple of days, literally everybody is trying to figure out how to do what we're doing right now. Um, so there's just, there are so many opportunities uh, with local businesses or, or national, I mean, really international everywhere. It, you could call a business right now and say, hi, my name's Cody Warner. I'm a content creator on YouTube. I know that this is a really hard time. You could ask the question, you know, have you been negatively affected by this? Um, or you could dive right into it. You could say, I would absolutely love to set up an hour call with you where I take you through how to use your iPhone to start putting videos on the internet, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever platform you feel like you could reach your people at the most to, to start um, seeing an increase in sales again, is that something that you'd be interested in? And you make that call a hundred, a thousand times, you're going to get a, 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 at least a handful of business owners who are, who are going to say, oh my goodness, I need to, I needed to do this. I have to figure out how to do it. I've just been putting it off because this is such a scary time. Please help. And, um, and yeah, so 
or, or, at, or like I mentioned earlier, once you start to build that relationship, um, you kind of maybe you give them a free ebook or something that gives them a step by step. And then the, the next step would be a consultation if they want to figure something out. The next step would be, OK, send me some of your products. Let's make let's make some videos. These are all ideas that I'm uh, that I'm thinking about and, and beginning to implement myself. So it's uh, yeah, just you got to think about the stuff that you have in here that um that most of these people out here don't have absolutely you know even for us i usually have my team here in the studio they're, they're doing everything remotely so don't think that you're limited by the fact that you can't go somewhere in fact that is one of the reasons there is so much opportunity remember restaurants to brick and mortar businesses uh, places that rely on foot traffic there's no foot traffic right now and it's not going to yeah. end anytime soon i mean at least where i live here in the seattle washington area it's going to uh may at least if not the end of may a lot of places are extending this so right now mm -hmm. is the time to strike and it sounds a little insensitive but that's the truth right now is a time that people need your skills they need to reach out to those customers those clients those people that are no longer coming to their stores what i've seen on social media is a lot of brands and companies scrambling to put out some content if you're if they're lucky mm -hmm. and have the equipment and they know how to edit uh, they're actually getting a lot of reach because the other thing to keep in mind everybody's on their phone everybody's stuck at home yeah. using their computers watching content on their uh, streaming uh, apps on tv so their attention is on their digital devices and this is why uh, cody yep. already mentioned it if you're a content creator you definitely want to be uploading videos if you can create content in your house or think of creative ways if you used to like cody and myself we vlog away from our home oftentimes right but now we have to vlog yeah. in our home so we have to get a little more creative be a little, uh, you know, use a little imagination. However, this is the time th these businesses need you. They need to be able to connect and you have the ability to do that, whether through recorded videos, uh, whether um, teaching them. I love that idea, Cody, about giving them an hour long consulting. You know, that it, it's crazy. You're talking 100x need in those services, the things that you yeah. do so regularly on a regular basis. So I love that. And so we're going to get into some other stuff. But are there any last thoughts um, and advice for people just starting out maybe so we can kind of transition for advice to people um, that are starting a YouTube channel because they have a lot of time, right? Maybe they got laid off or maybe they they know that they're not going to be able to go back to school for the next month or two. Um, what are some of the pieces of advice you give to people to start on YouTube today and crush it, whether getting views or getting subscribers? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a Pandora's box, right? There's just a million different ways that you can go. And I think that that is really um, one of the biggest hurdles that everyone comes across is I don't know where to focus, so I'm just not going to get started at all. The, the priority number one is get started, start figuring out your voice, start communicating with some sort of audience, whether that is um, around a certain genre, um, maybe one of your hobbies, what you're interested in. Maybe you start telling the stories of people like you who have been laid off or students like you who don't get to go back to school yes, for this semester. Yes. Or, um, you know, like we are, we are in a very weird time right now where we are all collectively experiencing the, the same thing. And so, um, thinking about ways to tell stories around that and lift other people up um, around that are, I think, the stories that are really, re really resonating with me right now. So what's really resonating with you? Is there content that you could make around that using nothing but your cell phone, you know, if, if you don't have a camera at home yet? Yeah, totally. And you can tell a lot of people are using their phones to create all their content. You know, there's a YouTube yeah. expert named D Nimmin. His whole channel is about mobile phone content creation. So uh, if you need a resource, there's definitely resources out there to be able to do it. And I personally use this for vlogging now, if you can believe that. I used to have a, a G7X Mark II that I carry around and I still use it. But if all, this is mm -hmm. all I have, this is all you need. And this is the iPhone 11 Pro. So we're going to get into some more uh, tips and um, 
things at the end. Of course, hit that like button if you guys are getting value. Leave your questions in the chat in the comments area because we're going to do a Q&A at the very end. If you're watching the replay, just join the members club and then you get the replays of the Q&As which are usually only for the live uh, uh, viewers. But I want to get into another part of your story. Now, collaborations. A lot of people watching yeah. this, they want to collab with other people. You know, you and I are collaborating right now. Uh, we're yeah. talking about how to help people with small channels, how to get views, how to get subscribers. And we're doing this a live stream. We pulled you in through vMix. So this is a collaboration. And of course, the, one of the biggest benefits is that cross promotion, right? The traffic from mm -hmm. each channel. Now, if you are lucky or you just hit the right opportunity, have that, that uh, amazing chance, you can collab with a bigger YouTuber. So one of the things about this channel, it's all about collaboration. So we were talking about this interview, but I've been interview, able to interview people like Casey Neistat, YouTube friends of mine, of course, Gary Vaynerchuk, so many people who have these epic uh, YouTube subscriberships, even when I had a small channel. And one of the ways I was able to do that is because I uh, went to them. I went to events where they were hanging out. Um, of course, I built relationships. There's so many different ways to do that. And so we're going to be talking about some of the advice that we would have for you, whether you're a small channel, um, you know, some other ways you can collaborate with people, even if they're not a, a big channel. But one of the things I want to ask you, and I know you get asked this all the time, Time, but the yeah. advice you have based off of that experience, I think is what's unique and people need to hear is your collaboration with Peter McKinnon. And so before we dive into your tips and uh, sharing about your experience, we have a clip to share with people uh, one of the key moments in your uh, journey that helped you just grow your subscribership and grow your channel. Let's play it right now. What's up, everybody? Peter McKinnon. Oh no, this is this is your vlog. I don't do. <laughs> this is mine. I'm, here, just, I'm sorry. Thanks, man. <laughs> this dude drove all the way here just because I tweeted him was like, "Come make a video with me." I love that. I'm gonna show him the office. What's up, you wonderful people? It's Cody Warner. Uh, if you came here from Peter, thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad you're here. This is awesome. I don't normally sweat this much. <laughs> you are so <laughs> what? Thank you. Yes, actually, that's cinematic B-roll wiping your sweat. All right, so that, I, I love that clip, and that's a pretty epic vlog. So you guys should go check it out on Cody's channel, which, by the way, we have all the links to all his stuff down below in the description below. But one of the reasons why I lo love this collaboration, of course, it was an opportunity of a lifetime, and I've had many of those. Uh, we've been uh, lucky enough to be able to do things like that on this channel, Video Influencers. But at the time, you had about less than 3,000 subscribers. And I don't know what Peter had, and I'm not as familiar with his channel, but I'm pretty sure he had at least a million subscribers. Um, if not, he was definitely blowing up. He was getting tons of views, had a lot of exposure. Tell us how that came about and uh, why that happened. Yeah, so I think at the time he had 2.2 million oh, wow. when we um, when we did that video on his channel. So I did a video on my channel, he did a video on his channel. Um, yeah, so how it came about was, you know, I in the in kind of the filmmaking uh, genre on YouTube really looked up to Peter McKinnon, you know, in in my mind as like, wow, what a what a radical person like lives so far away from me, which really I mean, he only lived about nine hours away from me. I know that because I drove there to, to do that collab. <laughs> but um you know, just just thought of him as this as this amazing guy, like just a completely different world and universe than I lived in. Right. And I made a couple of videos about him where his name was in the title and um, and he ended up seeing some of those videos. And then there was one video that he saw that was right around the time of. Uh, of I think it was VidCon and I saw a lot of people tweeting. I'm like, Peter, are you going to VidCon? And um, I was like, well, he's not going to be able to go to VidCon. He has a brand new baby at home. He's there's no way he's going to be able to go. And at the time I was daily vlogging, daily vlogging in my mind is kind of an excuse to make videos about whatever you want to make videos about. Totally. And I made a video called um, applying to be Peter McKinnon's babysitter editor. And 
uh, in the video, I showed my two kids and I and I did some cinematic uh, parenting, like cinematically sw swaddling a, a baby, like warming up a baby bottle. And there's there's some really cool shots in that video, actually. But um, he ended up seeing that video and tweeted at me like you just showed in that clip tweeted at me is like, dude, you got to come up to Toronto and make a video with me. What I didn't know at the time was he had a video in mind for his channel. So yeah. in my mind, when he tweeted at me, I was like, oh, sick. Like I'll get to have uh, Peter on my channel and that'll be a really, you know, like everyone who watches my channel will love that. And then I get there, you know, and and he's like, okay, here's my idea for my video. This it's is crazy. the message I, I want to have. And so that's when it hit me like, okay, we're making a video for his 2.2 million subscribers as well. Um, but, but yeah, it was just... Uh, funnily enough, it was that kind of comedic video that I did about um, kind of fakely applying to be his babysitter editor, which I had no desire to be either of those things that uh, that 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 sort of was the catalyst to the whole thing happening. Now, I'm sure that video was entertaining to him. Definitely caught his attention. But, you know, personally, you know, based off some of the collaborations I've been able to have, and even when I collaborate with other uh, channels who also are, you know, got smaller audiences, for me, it's their video library, right? Um, I look at mm. their content. Um, if I feel like they're hustling and they're they're putting out the work, and this isn't just a, a, a kind of a trend in their life or a, a, you know, like just for this year. This is something they truly are all about. I'm a huge fan. It doesn't matter how many subscribers. Tell us what, what what are the reasons you think that Peter collaborated with you? Because I know one of the reasons isn't something that a lot of people even think about. And it's, it's almost kind of like, how do you even teach that? And maybe you can't teach it, but I think it's important yeah. for people to hear. Yeah. So to your point about video library, so true. Like that was day, the day that um, he reached out on Twitter was day 174 of my daily vlog. So I literally had 174 videos, an entire library of videos where you could tell I was pretty committed to this craft of storytelling on YouTube, right? So that, uh, hands down, that was a huge component. Um, and, and I'm the same way, you know, if, if someone asks me for a collab or if someone, I start talking with somebody on Twitter or whatever, and it seems like maybe, oh, we're both going to be at the same event. I'll check out their channel and I'll see how serious are they about what they're doing. And that's, that's super important. Um, but yeah, that little, that gray area that you're talking about is just the idea that like when Pete, when I made Pete laugh in that, in that cinematic swaddling video, and then he watched a couple other of my pieces and he's like, yeah, this guy, he's a cool guy. Like, I think I would, I think I would like hanging out with him. That's one of those things where it's just like, you know, a, I do think it's very important that you learn how to let your real self and your personality sort of come through in your videos so that you can in a, in a way make those connections with real life people who are seeing them on the other side of the screen. Um, but B, it's just, you know, everybody connects with different types of people. So, you know, in, in some cases there's, there's a, again, this is like one of those things that's hard to talk about. How do you yeah. teach it? But it's like, sometimes you connect with people and sometimes you don't. And, and it's one of those things. Yeah, I think I, the principle is be yourself. And it sounds so cliche. Everybody talks about that, but you don't you really understand it until you get an opportunity like you got, which is you don't even know exactly why. Because you were one of probably hundreds or thousands he could have collabed with or invited. I mean, the, dude, Peter McKinnon inviting you over, like, of course, I probably would have flown to Toronto to be able to have that collab happen. <laughs> and so for, yeah. for me, this is why I love that advice on uh, sometimes it's just your personality. This is why it's important to be yourself, be authentic mm -hmm. because you never know and put out lots of videos that are basically hooks in the sea because you never know when you can connect with somebody. And one day that person might be somebody with a huge audience because to be honest, one of the number one ways to basically grow your audience is to go viral, right? If you go viral, it, it's a huge benefit because there's a lot of views, a lot of exposure, and uh, the the percentage or the, the, the people that connect with you might subscribe. And the other way is to collaborate with people, especially collaborate with people with a larger audience. But, you know, the things I see objectively about you um, outside your personality is also you're a filmmaker, 
right? You're an editor, you're a photographer, you know what you're doing. Things that uh, also Peter can relate to you. Three, you put out lots of content, just like Peter McKinnon. So do all those things, be yourself, and you don't know what epic creators you could potentially connect with. And at the end of the day, the one thing I'd say is, even if you don't get to collab with somebody, all that action is going to result in some kind of beneficial thing in your life. So why not do it mm -hmm. anyways? But what I have seen is most people eventually will be able to collab with somebody, um, especially if you grow. And, you know, I don't know. Th this is how I look at it. I get a lot of people asking to collaborate with me um, or other vloggers, of course, want to uh, do a co-vlog together. And I'm all, I'm all about it. If, again, like I like their content or whatever. But I want to see that this is something you take very seriously. And so this is why we can't emphasize enough the work that it takes, right? The recording of vlogs, the, the editing, the uploading, and doing it consistently. In fact, I mean, even though you didn't grow that much in the first 10 years, he may have seen how committed you were to YouTube in general, right? I mean, you've uploaded yeah. a lot of content. So those are things that I can only speak of that are really important. And in fact, you know, one of my biggest collaborations here on Video Influencers was an interview I did with Gary Vaynerchuk. And when I made that request out, this is near the beginning of video influencers starting up. And of course, I personally had an audience on my vlog channel. I already had a following on social media. But on video influencers, I think we had about less than 10,000 subscribers. And this is when Gary was really blowing up. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he saw my library. He saw my passion, my effort to help other creators. And that's what he wants to do with his channel as well. So anything else you want to add in terms of practical tips for other people when it comes to collaboration? And why would you collaborate with somebody that reaches out with you? Yeah. I, yeah, I, it's one of those things where it's got to it's gotta fit both ways. You know, the, the idea... Um, any collab that I've ever done, I think there's the the person that I'm collaborating with, I'm fulfilling some sort of goal for their video, and they're probably fulfilling some sort of goal for my video, right? And so um, just the just those those points that you hit on the video library, being authentic, being yourself. And the there's also this other again a bit of a gray hard to teach area of just just this of like um almost knowing that that it's gonna work out somehow yeah. it's gonna work out and even you're coming the idea that even if i spend all this time and all on, on you and the only thing that comes from it is my own person that's more yeah. than enough so yeah. that that comes across on camera. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And that's the thing, especially during this time, these hard days during this crisis, all that, even if you didn't have a following, even if you didn't have those views, these skills are so valuable. And I've been saying that forever. In fact, that's why uh, Sean and I wrote YouTube Secrets because YouTube has continued to be a very relevant place, even with uh, TikTok growing. And obviously there was Instagram, Insta Stories, Snapchat, so many other competitors, right? Facebook's getting into the video game. YouTube has been the place that has continued to be relevant and grow. And one thing I'll definitely say is it's growing even more so now more than ever. People are at home, they're watching videos, they're consuming content. Unfortunately, I hope this isn't you and after watching this, if it is you, you're in a different place. But there's a lot of people that are uh, depressed, right? They're stressed out. They want to escape the reality of being quarantined or isolated. So they watch videos. I can tell you this. I've been watching more gardening videos than I've ever watched ever because it's springtime. I'm getting into the backyard and gardening tomatoes and different things. So even me, I'm watching more YouTube than normal because I can't go anywhere. I can't go out on errands. I can't go into downtown. I can't travel. So just take advantage of this situation. 
where people are literally on YouTube 24 seven and you want to be one of those people putting out content, but just know if you have put out a hundred videos, if you have been vlogging for a couple of years, if you've been creating content for a decade that your skills can be transferred into some kind of uh, 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 valuable skill to start a side business or maybe start a whole new career. So um, uh, before we get into the Q&A, what would be your last thoughts? What would be the piece of advice you have for creators who are just getting started, um, whether it's during this hard time or just generally on YouTube um, if they're starting a channel today? Yeah, the goal is connection and and it's not, it really isn't a sprint. If it is a sprint, series of sprints, right? It's a take your time, have fun with what you're doing and, and really connect with the people, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on some of those other social platforms and, and YouTube is kind of your pillar because that's where your, your passion is or you feel like that's a great way to build a business, whatever it is. Take your time as you build it and don't get too caught up in the numbers. Don't get too caught up in the views. Like just give yourself years and years. Take that long-term view and and make a tiny improvement every single day. For and sure. uh, you're gonna hey, Cody, see you're gonna see dividends. Uh, Cody, sorry, um we might need to reset your connection. Your audio was kind of scratchy there, but um why don't you go ahead and kind of uh reset and then connect back in. But I, 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 I totally echo all that. I think connection is more important right now than ever. You need to create content for those people that want to connect with someone like yourself. So even though there are definitely a lot of creators and there's a lot of competition for people's attention, the one benefit is there's a lot more attention right now. And even if you're getting into a genre where there's already a lot of channels that's got huge influencers, there's people that want to connect with you specifically. You as a unique person that can talk about this gardening technique in your own way. Um, uh, share these tips based on your unique experiences. So just know that even though there are a lot of channels out there and there's going to be more channels competing for people's attention, more than ever, that you can have your own little spin, that you can have a different perspective on a topic that probably will connect with that audience so you can get more subscribers and build your influence so that you can make this a full time gig. So we're going to be diving into Q&A once we get Cody connected. Hit that like button if you guys are getting value out of this. Uh, put your qu questions down below. Um, if you guys thought that was great, I would love to have Cody uh, jump back on here um, another for another VI show. But if you guys um, want more content like this, you go ahead and click or tap the screen right here. If you guys want content specifically for you guys starting YouTube channels, um, if you're a beginner when it comes to YouTube, click or tap the screen right here to see our full playlist. And make sure you go uh, visit Cody's channels at the links down below.